Blacksit family, it's Juliet, and I'm here today. In fact, I've got to say that I have to get serious because I'm talking serious subjects with a very, very, very serious guest today. Blacksit family, you've asked me many questions, some questions that I am honestly not in a position to answer. And those questions are best answered by someone who I think is in a position, who has the expertise, the experience, the knowledge, the know-how, and to be honest with you, the man who has all the skills. This is one of Gambians, and the only, in my view, politician in Gambia that was equipped at this time to not only answer my questions with dexterity and experience, but also, at the moment, is a leading voice in Gambia. So without further ado, I would like to honestly, should I, should I do the introductions or should I let you do the introductions? I think it's better to let you do your own introduction because I find that when people speak their own self and their own truth, it's more powerful. This is the honourable, honourable, honourable. Halifa Sala. I am a member of the National Assembly, but essentially an activist for the liberation of the continent. I do not want to wear any other cap than having inherited a tradition that the people that fails to be the architects of their own destiny will always be victims of blind destiny. They will be among the wretched of the earth, from the cradle to the grave. And my life is to reverse that mentality, to live, to ensure that we do not continue to be counted among the wretched of the earth. That is what I have devoted my life to and will die struggling until that goal is achieved. Or at least, will die trying. Wow, you don't want that too soon, okay? So let's talk about the life that you have led. Uh, Black Sit family, I'm going to talk in context with the African Union address that um, I will be doing, which is all about the rallying call to the diaspora. And in context with that, I'm going to really focus on um, the diasporan journey and the diasporan future uh, in terms of the connection with our input into Africa, our return to the motherland and what we can bring as returnees and also how we can work together, hand in hand together. This is for us to bring our, our land, our motherland, our people, our resources, this is to put ourselves back in the forefront of society and humanity, back in our place, which is where we truly deserve to be. And that is why I'm here today, because I know you are part of that destiny. I cried inside my very heart when the women from the diaspora visited the Gambia decades ago. And I was called to comfort a woman who could not stop crying when taken to Janjamore and shown a place they called Slave House. She came back and wondered why she was on holiday. And I told the Gambians who called me that uh, you cannot invite people to come on holiday as tourists to their homeland. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are returnees. That uh, 
to bring such a person and believe that you can take that person to Janjambure or Jufure just for sightseeing is a betrayal of those who have fought tirelessly to ensure that the past is redeemed. It's a past that we should not be afraid to look back to. Exactly. But it's a past we must not live in. Exactly. It's a past we must learn from in order to shape our common destiny. That we shared a common destiny of oppression from all sides of the globe. People were taken from here in captivity and enslaved against their will. Absolutely. And they struggled. And as Frederick Douglass had said, power concede to no one without a demand. It never did, it never will. That you must demand for liberation. That's right. And seize that liberation to know that freedom is your possession. It's not a gift. I've never felt more free than I have in the Gambia. I'm going to be honest with you. I have suffered so the suffering of those who were taken away, deprived of a homeland, was equally paralleled by the suffering of those who remain, but eventually had to be strangers in their own homeland because their homeland became colonized yes. and their countries were owned by foreign powers and their wealth taken away from them and ultimately they were reduced to raw material producers exported to foreign lands, processed and brought back to them in finished products and they continue to wallow in poverty while those who dominated them continue to enrich themselves. That's what we realize. It's the truth. And that is what led to the desire to come together to free the African people. The joint realization of our common suffering and oppression led to joint action for our common liberation. That's why we had the first Pan-African Conference held in 1900. Yes. Where Sylvester Williams and the rest of those from the continent realized that unless Africa was free, the African in the diaspora will continue to be discriminated and will not, have, will not have a homeland to return to. That once Africa is respected, Africans everywhere will be respected. And that is inconceivable without taking charge of our destiny. And that constituted a beginning for the struggle for the liberation of the continent. You see? We all know that the Gavi movement was created Yes. In order to prepare people in the diaspora to come back home. Yes. But they did not know the homeland they were to come back to was also controlled by the very people who sold them to slavery. Exactly. So that is why in 1919, the Dubois held conferences, the Foreign Pan, Foreign Pan African Conference in, in Paris. And you can see that when Dubois left the United States, the objective was to get the President of the United States to agree to a concept of ensuring the right to self-determination and independence of the African people because self-determination was the clarion call after the First World War, mm -hmm. where even the European nations who were dominated by European nations, 
began to call for national liberation. Yes. And Dubois said that you, you, your powers had controlled our homeland, divided it, and reduced them into colonies. Yes, by an Now you are scrambling mm -hmm. among yourselves. You are fighting each other. And some are going to be victors. And some are going to be co conquered. And eventually you will take the colonies of the conquered and turn them into your colonies. That should not be. We must ensure that the right to self-determination is extended to those colonies so that they begin the process of working towards independence. In fact, that's what brought about the whole trusteeship system in, on the, of the League of Nations, where some of these countries were put on the trusteeship in preparation for their self-determination. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This was a work of Africans in the diaspora and Africans from the continent. Collective action for our collective liberation. Exactly. So now we have the rallying call home. This is what my address is about. I would like you to send a message to the African Union that I will be addressing tomorrow about the rallying call for Africa. I would like you to tell the diasporans that they are welcome to come back here to the Gambia. They need to hear it from you. The welcome would even be an insult. Okay. They have a right to come back to the Gambia and to other parts of the continent because they were taken from places to go and serve a foreign master. And as a result, those who left lost all trace of the real place where they originated from. The only conception they had is that they are from a continent. And that is what has brought about the whole concept of unification of the continent. That Africa must unite became a fundamental clarion call of people from the continent and from people African from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Because the people who had been taken away can no longer locate themselves on any tip of the continent. They can only locate themselves on the continent as a whole. That's right. So the continent owes them an obligation to unite and be one. So that we can become one people. One Africa, one people one continent. That is what is required. And that is not only a demand which is sentimental, it is a demand that is a necessity. Totally. Why? Because our fragmented states for over 50 years of national liberation and independence are still dependent yes. on external powers for our manufactured goods. For even to run our budgets in some instances, debts to build roads, when in actual fact, we are diamond producers, we are oil producers, we are copper producers, Cobalt. we are gold producers, we are producers of all sorts of raw materials, cocoa, tea, cattle, Rice. everything that a human being needs That's right. to have food, water, clothes, proper housing, we have everything. What do we need? A programmatic policy document that shows us how our raw materials should be harnessed, how they should be transformed into finished products in order to industrialize, and how to ensure that we distribute them in such a manner that we eradicate poverty. What type of system are we to produce to ensure that our collective terrestrial, atmospheric, as well as marine wealth will be the wealth of the African people and that we'll be able to harness it by having the right policies so that our people will be able to channel themselves in the right positions of the division of labor in life so that each will serve all and all will serve each. That is what we are calling for. Therefore, the people in the diaspora, Africans in the diaspora, are a resource of the continent. We are indeed. What ought to be done is for Africa to unify the continent and also call on the diaspora to become unified, to create a data bank for them so that what they are, the capacities they have developed, the resources they have accumulated, 
would be identified and on the continent proper planning is done so that they will know how to implant that capacity and resource so that they will be part and parcel of Africa that is capable of being the architect of its own destiny. Absolutely. That is what is called for by our times of circumstances. That is the demand of the 21st century. We cannot go beyond the 21st century and be still be the beggars of the human race. No. That is a crime it is. against humanity that African leaders cannot afford to be charged. Absolutely. So it means that in all our constitutions, there should be what you call citizenship on the basis of dissent. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. And that dissent would mean all Africans in the diaspora That's right. should, upon demand, acquire citizenship by dissent. I that agree. is a provision that should be in every African constitution. And we must now start working for that to happen. And that should be a campaign. If it has not happened, for example, in our own recommendation to the Constitutional Review Commission of the Gambia, we have made that to be a principal recommendation of the political party that I represent. That we must have citizenship on the basis of dissent where those people who have left the continent centuries ago against their will will be able to rely on that provision to become Gambian citizens. And we'll be campaigning for it. And we'll call on all people in the diaspora to campaign for that, to be part and parcel of the Gambian constitution, and send that message to all African leaders so that that provision will be part and parcel of the provision of all constitutional Republican constitutions of every African country. I totally, totally, totally. Classic family, we all agree. We all agree. This is what we're asking for. This is what we're calling for. In Ghana, they have the dual citizenship. They have the land. They have the program. They have the year returning. We need to have this everywhere. It doesn't need to be one year. It needs to be all year, every year. This is what I'm saying. This is our own. We want to bring back, in America, 1.7 trillion dollars is spent within the black community every year that is their spending power bring that home bring that home help with the infrastructure of africa africa is rich africa's not poor remember that the task of liberation is a zigzag it's not straightforward we have attained the first phase of being sovereign nations. But the second phase of economic emancipation is still in the horizon, mm -hmm. waiting for leaders committed to bring that about. Mm -hmm. The resources are here, but if we have the poverty of the mind, it will give the impression that we do not even have the resources. This is so it, we mindset. must we must bear in mind whether here or in the diaspora, that the mindset must be changed. All of us must take ownership of Africa. All of us must become sovereign. All of us must become equal in sovereignty. When those are failing, let me not call it my failure. They are failing because they have failed to serve Africa the way they should serve it. I then should take the duty of serving Africa the way I should serve so that I become an example. That is the challenge now. A new generation of political leadership must emerge on the continent and determine to make the diaspora proud of the Africa they have come to belong to. But the Af diaspora must also not wait and say that I must wait until everything is right before I take ownership of Africa. We have Maybe to the process. you are also going to be those who will help to change the mindset yes. so that what we know we have and that is resources, enough resources, abundant resources to ensure that every African live in liberty, dignity and prosperity. We must recognize that and know that our problem now is the poverty of the mind. So we must battle the poverty of the mind here and abroad so that tomorrow all of us will collectively work together to shape the destiny that we all will be proud of. That is the challenge. This is Honorable Halifa Saleh. And I'm so proud to be in your company today. And what you've said is it's given me power to keep on doing what I'm doing.
because I know I'm doing the right thing. I love my motherland and I love my family. And I've seen some progress here on the continent. I've got to say that has made me so proud to be African. It's so humbling. It brings tears to my eyes. On the, on the, people that understand, I don't think, a lot of the time, the pain we go through um, being divorced from our mother's boss, bosom, from being divorced from the motherland. And when we start to see progress, we start to have a glimmer of hope. And recently, I saw a glimmer of hope. His Excellency Paul Kagame, who is the um, president of Rwanda, recently um, endorsed the repealing of colonial laws in Rwanda. Do you think he's taken a step in the right direction? And do you think this is something that other countries in Africa could follow suit with? It is important to take every attempt to reverse what oppress us as a positive move in the right direction. But this is an Africa which is trying to reposition itself, to reinvent itself. And the task is immense. The route diverse, the starting point different. Essentially, what is needed is precisely that innovative capacity. We must look at all examples and let's move on with those examples and see ultimately how that collective example will shape a continent united in purpose, in direction, to be able to address the issue of liberty. There is absolutely no doubt that there are many ways of addressing the issue. And you've mentioned an example that is often mentioned in many circles. But I am emphasizing that that is one step. There are thousands of steps now that must be taken. Fundamentally, I must say that a new leadership must emerge in the continent that must be ready to accompany the type of change that will guarantee liberty and prosperity to the people. A change not only for one state, not only for the continent, but a change for Africans on the continent and Africans everywhere in the globe. Because the beginning of the national liberation struggle started with Africans on the continent and in the diaspora coming together to realize the racial discrimination that they were subjected to, to realize the humiliation they were subjected to, and came to the understanding that they must develop an agenda for national liberation that will ensure that the continent from which they held will earn the liberation that it deserves so that it will rise up and be a star among the world constellation of nations. That was the objective. That no continent will be above the African continent. Yes, we can be equal, but we will not subdue to a superior uh, uh, organization or, or continental uh, organization. We will be equal to all. So what is essential now is to accompany all the changes in all the countries. And then we move and see in a decade, and that is my, my conception, that in a decade, a continent that has been sleeping, what is called a sleeping giant, will be awakened as her people refuse to sleep again, as her people refuse to be silent again, as her people refuse to be dominated again. That is coming. There is no doubt about it. Okay. One of the things that I noticed whilst being in England is that many people, many of us, Africans born in England, have the desire, have the yearning, have the yearning to come back. But not everybody is as fortunate 
as, as we have been, as our family have been, in order to financially plan and be in a position to return, to contribute back to the, to the continent, to Gambia in particular. But there are those who want to come and they have the skills, but they do not have the financial means. Not for any other reason other than the fact that they're taxed to the hilt and every time they try and get away, something else pulls the money away. And they try and they cannot get out, not even to go on a holiday to Europe, let alone to come on the continent. But we want to, we want to create a way so that their skills, whether they're engineers, they're computer scientists, uh, whether they're social workers, teachers, whether they're road builders or, or, or railway builders or you know anything in fact that is going to add to the development of Africa. We want to know what can we bring, what can we do. I'm, we're prepared to put our money where our mouth is and to help to create a settlement here. But what, what can we bring? What, what can we do to help? Because people want to come, they want to contribute to the motherland. They want to be of service. I am of service. And others want to be of service too. We want to be of service. Yes, uh, it is important to have a template that is applicable and that will help all of us to understand the answer. We must not treat the coming of the people, African people in the diaspora, as if they are refugees coming to Africa. That refugee syndrome must be eradicated. They must see themselves as citizens of a continent who are outside preparing to come home. It means that people are ready to welcome them. People are ready to accompany you so that you feel at home. That is why the work starts now yeah. with what you are doing. The media must be involved for people to understand who are the African people. Because if we don't understand who the African people are, we'll be divided into narrow nationalist entities where a South African will feel that I am a South African. I'm a Gambian, and if somebody leaves from Gambia to go to South Africa, well, uh, what are they doing here? So you'll find people even discriminating each other just from being from one African entity to the other. We must begin the whole concept of rolling back the mentality implanted in us that makes us different. First, the nationalist mentality into a continental mentality. A continental mentality into a universal mentality of the African people everywhere. So it is important, therefore, for as we demand for African constitution to provide for citizenship by descent, leaders must also engage in policy making in ensuring that you create in the embassies a data bank where all Africans in the diaspora would be able to come and register their expertise, their areas of interest. And this will be sent back to the countries they intend to first settle so that all programs and policies and, and projects can be prepared so that they will be easily absorbed into domains where they want to operate. We are talking about planned return. Yes. That cannot be done extensively at the beginning. It means that individuals must plan their return but then states must plan the return of the African people. So we are talking about two processes. 
the first process is that those who can return now and want to return must be able to come, create struggle for the right environment to be created, whether at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, so that an institution, a, 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 a department will be created. They must demand for it. Demand for the citizenship clause and demand for that, that, that office. So that when they come, they know where to go, declare their interest and planning their return. Those who could return can start in that way. And those of us in the continent should accompany you in that process. I agree. Um, and those who intend to return from all shades who cannot return on their own, the planned return of the African people could also be done by, by the governments that exist. That is necessary. Oh, I totally agree. It has to be and in and process. Um, in addition to that, what I was about to say is that I think your idea about the database is fabulous because, you see, if, for example, my mom was a headmistress for 30 years, she's now retired, her skills could be sought where the, the need for, for teachers are. Or I, for example, I'm a business developer, my um, skill set could be put here where the need for business development is concerned, whether my specialism is in tourism and customer service or customer delivery journey. Either way, or, or, or managing business operations, or uh, also business institutions. So I think that it's really important that we're able to come and to say, look, okay, we can, um, we can deposit this money. So talking about money, inward investment. There are people you know, in the diaspora, Africans away from Africa, who want to invest. There are people with money who have sold their properties or who have inherited wealth um, or who have been very successful uh, with their businesses and they've decided they've had enough. They've just had enough. They can't take any more racism. They can't take any more discrimination. They can't take any more. They don't want to pay their taxes there anymore. That is why. Where, where, can, they, where can they invest? You have already answered the question. You know your profession. We must build institutions that brings the people in the diaspora, Africans in the diaspora, with Africans at home to work together. You know people with the world. What stops from creating a bank? Would be an investment bank created by Africans in the diaspora so that whoever wants to come can deposit resources and that can be injected in the productive base somewhere where the person will be able to earn what is necessary to be able to live here. And all sorts of productive enterprises can be established and in partnership, in shareholding with people who are here. That is the way. So it is important therefore as a business developer you can create a business product of ensuring that there is a training of investment. Some may have land and you have money. How could we build an ecotourism infrastructure? So that this will be based on the African experience. That those who are coming will be able this time not just to be a tourist for its sake, but they are coming home but they want to do so gradually, they are helping those people who are already home to be able to consolidate and serve the continent. So your product will be different from somebody who just wants to say, I have money, let me come and, and invest for profit and make millions. So that is the strategy, investment strategy that will contribute to the productive base and becomes a win-win situation that elevates the living standards of the African people. That is the way forward. Okay, my last question to you. I've enjoyed this I've enjoyed family. Black Sea family. He's so powerful. I am energized. I am positively inspired. And intellectually, I am elevated. I am elevated by you, sir. I really am. And my last question is, I would like you to use your words to illustrate to the Black Sip family 
the beauty and the wonders of Africa. In terms of a people, despite centuries of exploitation and oppression, centuries of dehumanization, once you step foot on the continent, you begin to see what humanity means. You see how the elderly are treated. Instead of losing authority because of age, in fact, they gain more authority and more respect because of age. That shows respect for the source of life. Knowing that it is those who bring you into this world that made it possible to you, for you to live, then you do not recognize their weakness at all age. You recognize the strength which they had in bringing you to life. And Africans will be Africans and will never again be subjected to exploitation, oppression, and domination. And we will be the freest people on this earth. And our children will be the freest people on this earth. That is what Africa deserves. That is what Africa will have. And this century is the century for that liberation. Honorable Halifa Sane. <laughs> Honestly, 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 I just thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. He is the He is the voice of all of us. He is the voice of our future. He is the voice of everything we represent. You are the best. The best of the best of the best. And don't you ever forget it. Thank you for being our voice. Everything you've been through has been worth it just for today. The world knows you. The world will know this man. This man, this man is the architect of our destiny. Blacksit family, we love this man. We love this man. We love this man. Blacksit family, you smash that like button for this man. You share this all around the world, Blacksit family. And don't forget, we need your help to keep the money flowing in. So those donations, they help. But this man deserves your ears. He deserves to be shared worldwide. Please, Blacksit family, share this message, share his message, share his voice. One family, we're one destiny, we're one nation, and we are going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to be the best the world has ever seen. One Africa.